Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss denial of service and distributed denial of service attacks known as DDoS. This topic falls under the umbrella of IT threat or IT crime, cybersecurity crime, and computer crime or computer threats. What is denial of service attack or DOS? This is a cyber attack in which the attacker rents a system or a network unavailable, not available for the users. Now, how do they do that? How do they accomplish their goal? They overwhelmingly flood the network or the server with illegitimate requests. So if you are trying to access the system, you cannot access it because the resources are being used. Now, when we talk about denial of service, DOS, we are, we are discussing one computer or one system. So simply put, for example, this is the illeg illegitimate request, requesting to access a website or a server, and doing so, repeatedly doing so, trying to break the server so you cannot access. So these legitimate computers cannot access the website. That's the purpose of it. But DOS is only one source. So the primary purpose of an attack like this, denial of service, is to suspend the host machine or network services. So this basically, it could last for a day, an hour, a couple of days, depending on the goal of the intruder. What are they, what are they trying to do? So a DOS attacks can target various resources. Usually it's the website. They can also attack your server, network device, or even an individual computer. Now let's talk about DDoS. Now let's talk about DDoS. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today, which is a distributed denial of service attacks. Similar, from the naming, it's similar, but it's more complex, more advanced version of DOS. Instead of one computer, as we saw in the prior slide, and one internet connection, a DDoS attacks utilizing multiple computers from multiple locations geographically, often using what we call botnet. Bot Net, a network of compromised computers. How does it work? So you have one individual who they would, what they would do, they would write a malware and they control other computers. And what they do, they plan to attack a website, for example. For what purpose? Again, to deny this website a service, to, to make it unavailable, to break the server. But rather than having one computer, what happened is those computers here are zombies. They are called botnet. Why? Because they are programmed to help the attacker. So the attacker, this individual, this big computer, is controlling these computers. So the machine behind the DDoS attacks are often distributed around the world, and they are more challenging to mitigate compared to a DOS, denial of service, because they involve a distributed and coordinated effort from multiple sources. But the goal is the same between a DOS or a DDoS, is to disrupt the target's availability whether it's a website, network, making it inaccessible to legitimate users. What are some key differences between the two that you need to be aware of? Once again, let's summarize. The DOS is a single source or a limited number of sources. However, a DDoS is a multiple sources. So the source is more, the volume is more, the intensity. The DDoS attacks tend to be more intense and can generate a much larger volume of traffic. The reason is because they recruited other computers to do what? to perform that service for them, to help them in the attack, making them more disruptive. Also resiliency, they are more challenging to, def to defend against because they are distributed all over the world, whereas DOS attacks are usually easier to mitigate. Now, both types have serious consequences, downtime, financial losses, reputational damage, especially if you cannot log to a website. Let's take a look at a specific types and examples of DOS. We have what's called volume-based attack. The attacker in the, under this situation tries to consume the bandwidth of the victim's network, making it unavailable. We have the protocol attacks, where the attacker consumes server resources 
or those intermediate communication equipment like firewalls and load balancers through something called ping of death or smurf attack. The attacker send malicious pings to a system, just basically keep on asking the system, often with oversized payloads causing the system to overload, just basically overload the new. Or under a smurf attack, the attacker sends what we call ICMP, which is Internet Control Message Protocol, to a network broadcast IP internet protocol causing all devices on that network to send response to the victim. Simply put, they're just overwhelm, overwhelming. That's the whole purpose of it. Or they can perform what's called an application layer attacks. These attacks target the application itself, aiming to exhaust its resources. This is done through HTTP flood. The attacker sends seemingly legitimate HTTP GET or POST request to overload a web browser, simply trying to log into your web browser constantly. What type of security measures organization can utilize? Well, they can use firewalls, they can use intrusion detection system IDSs, and they can use content delivery network to help do what? Protect against these types of attacks. Also, internet service providers may implement traffic filtering and scrubbing services to mitigate the impact on their customers. Simply put, if they see a large attack, they can slow down or they can deny, deny access to the network. Other controls to mitigate DOS threats will be rate limiting. What does that mean? Setting a threshold for the number of requests a server will accept within a specified time period from a single IP. So you cannot keep logging into, the, into their website from a single IP. You can do it maybe 20 times per hour or 30 times per hour. Sometimes what happens is this. During the CPA exam score release, that used to happen at least in the past, everybody is logging into the CPA central system all at the same time. Well, what they're doing is denial of service without knowing because everybody trying to log in at the same time repeatedly. That could happen. So what they can do, they could limit you. If somebody logged in 20 times in an hour, they just from that IP, they can no longer log in for the next 24 hours or for the next 10 minutes or half an hour or 45 minutes or whatever the reason is. Traffic analysis. Well, using tools to differentiate between legitimate and malicious traffic pattern. If this is your traffic throughout the day and suddenly you have a large traffic, then this is something unusual going on. Analyze the traffic. Web application firewalls. Inspect the content of traffic to block malicious data packets. Which web application firewalls. Just look at what's being sent to you before you accept. Ingress and egress filtering, blocking traffic from known malicious IP addresses. If you know there are certain malicious IP addresses, and for example, cybersecurity people, they list those IPs, include them on your network. So any, any requests from these IPs are automatically denied and ensuring that traffic leaving the network is legitimate as well response client requests. So the people you are responding to, making your system available to, are legitimate customers. Anomaly-based detection use AI and machine learning to recognize and respond to unusual traffic. And this basically goes to traffic analysis. Those two goes hand in hand. Let's take a look at the multiple choice questions from Farhat lectures that help you understand this topic. In a denial of service attack, what's the attacker's primary goal? What is their primary goal? Is it to steal sensitive data? Not really, this is basically maybe a spyware will try to do that. To disrupt the target's availability? I would say yes, it means don't make it available. Unavailable, yes, that's part of the DOS. To gain unauthorized access to the system? They're not interested, they wanna put the system down. This is the, the purpose of it. To deface a website? Well, in a sense, you deface the website, but that's not the main target. The main target will be just to make the system unavailable, to disrupt the target's availability, whether that's a network, a website, a server, just you go to you go to log in and you will see this constant spinning of the wheel where nothing is going on. Therefore, the answer is B, to disrupt the target's availability. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, whether you're studying for your CPA exam, CMA exam, accounting information student, invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.